What's up guys, Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I just downloaded the 10.1 iOS update on my iPhone 7 Plus. And one of the big features that comes out in that in a beta form is the depth of field effect for your camera. And so this is cool for taking photos, uh, particularly portraits, and it keeps the subject of your picture in focus, but uh, effectively blurs the things that are further back. So it gives you that uh, depth of field effect. Now. It's kind of faked as I understand it. And so what I wanted to do is take some pictures here and compare the standard photo picture on the, my iPhone 7 Plus and then use the portrait picture and try to do some comparisons because I found some things that I think are relatively in interesting. So first of all, I took a picture of my model sailboat here. This is on standard camera and every, as you can see, everything including that fishing rod in the back is pretty much in focus. Now I look at the depth of field effect, the portrait mode, uh, you can see that the boat is in focus and the fishing rod is out of focus or it's blurred. So it does work, it worked really, really well here. And actually one of my, this was my the first photo I took with it and I was actually really, really impressed with the results. Now I will say this, when you take the picture using a portrait mode, it appears to use the 2X camera lens. So uh, if you're comparing it to a picture that you're taking with the standard photo app, you either have to switch to 2X to get a, um, a similar photo, or you're gonna have to back up, you know? So just keep that in mind that, uh, you know, when you're using the portrait mode, it's using that other lens apparently. Now, let's take a look at this other picture. I took this one of my desk. Sharpie, Paper uh, Pro, stapler, and then my uh, phone in the background. And while there is a little bit of blurring on the back uh, objects there, you know, they're all pretty well um, in focus. Now, if we look at the portrait mode photo here, what you can see is definitely some more blurring of the, the objects in the back. And in fact, uh, back here, you can see it quite obviously, that's kind of the big difference. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out around the top of the marker here, you can see that the edge of the marker and the whole marker is supposed to be basically in focus. There's a little blurring like right along the edge. Now, this is the first time I saw it. So this was my second photo attempt with it. And I saw that and I thought, um, oh, it's interesting. You know, that's the object that's supposed to be really in focus, but there's a little blurring. Now, you'll see that again in some later pictures and even more obviously. So I think what it's, uh, it's indicative of is how the two cameras are trying to work together and create the effect using some software. So it's not perfect. It's not like true depth of field focus. It's, it's kind of this fake to focus. But generally, so far, I'm pretty happy with the results. Now, here's a picture I took of a doll in front of pumpkins. Uh, standard camera app and now let's look at it in portrait mode and you can see much you know much more blurred in the background and in fact this one is actually pretty dramatic so I definitely am kind of a, a fan of the portrait effect it really looks pretty cool now this doll and this pumpkin right here were are right next to each other so the fact that they're both in focus even though they're kind of pushed off to one side I was pretty impressed with and everything behind it now you can see here it's gonna be a little tough but right along the edge of the doll you can see that the blurring kind of bleeds over on the doll to the background you know it's really trying I think uh, to use both cameras is my guess to create a parallax and then uh, use that parallax to decide what where the threshold is that it should kind of blur and not blur um, and so you can see you know right right in here there's a little bit of kind of blending not a big deal but you know overall I'm pretty impressed with the picture but those are starting to creep up in some of the photos that I'm taking and it's kind of the telltale sign that uh, this is how it's doing let's take another look at this picture this is on the standard camera app everything's in focus what I have at the plants in front this tree trunk is about five feet beyond that and then obviously the trees in the the far background are very far off if we look at it using portrait mode I'm pretty impressed here because the leaves of this plant do stay relatively in focus the tree trunk kind of gets a you know a half blurring effect and then the stuff in the far back seems to get more blurred so it really does kind of figure out how far back things are from your subject and kind of graduates the the blurring 
again here, there is some, you know, kind of overlap right where, you know, on the border of some of these objects where they should kind of have a sharp edge to them, but they are kind of getting caught up in that, that, uh, the effect. Now, this is one that I didn't realize actually came out very, very poorly. So this was uh, as a rose bush, taking it, looking down on the rose bush, so the ground behind it should get blurred. Uh, but as you can see, you know, like let's as we look, you look at these stems right here, and right here, um, and even right here, because it's not obvious that they're attached to the to the roses. But when we go to the portrait effect, we almost lose them completely because what particularly this one and I think what's happening is that because the camera isn't really creating a really sharp defined edge because there's a little blurring on this side of the stem and a little blurring on this side of the stem you basically effectively lose the stem overall now the other thing I'll notice is right along the edge and of the rose over here you can see where the blurring actually doesn't come up close enough to the rose petal so you can see kind of really clear focused ground behind the rose itself and so it's not working really really well in this one and in fact over here on this rose you can see right along the edge of the rose there um, again it's keeping the the ground in focus when it really should have a blurred so one of the, the things and again it's a beta but figuring out where the edge is and kind of creating a really defined edge between the in focus and the out of focus portions seems to be kind of tricky for uh, the, the app right now. All right, let's take a look at this. This is a tree trunk with a bush right behind it and then trees off in the distance. Uh, standard camera app here. Now let's look at it here and the tree trunk is in focus and everything else is blurred. Again, right along the edge you know, it's it, it's the the edge of the tree trunk kind of gets blurred away. It's almost like you were taking the standard photo, and you can kind of see it here. It doesn't kind of create a real crisp edge along the kind of the edges of the bark. You know, the 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 kind of the pointiness of the bark. It's almost like you take a standard photo and then kind of do the blur effect. You kind of pick it, pick a borderline, and do the blur effect afterwards. It's cool that you're kind of doing it in real time in the camera app. But it's almost, in my uh, mind, it's something that you could do in post if you really want to. All right, here is a little evergreen bush in front of, or sitting on the lawn. Everything else is pretty far back behind it. You can see a house back there and some trees. Those are all pretty far back. Look at it in portrait mode. Actually, this picture, I was shocked at how well it worked. You can actually see, because of all these little pine needles and stuff, I actually really thought that these would get lost you know, in the blurring of the tree and stuff, you know, but the the edges here actually worked uh, worked out pretty well in, and are defined pretty well in the picture. Now, I don't know if this is because maybe I was holding it a little more still or something like that. All of these shots I took just with my hand, none of them were on a tripod, but I was shocked at how well the these these evergreen uh, limbs all really stayed in focus and really sharp and things behind them uh, you know were blurred appropriately so pretty impressed with this one I, I this one came out much much better and actually I have no qualms with this one uh, despite the fact that when I took it I was like pretty sure that this was not going to work out well all right here is a bush in front of a tree we looked at a similar one but the thing is the bush is uh, about three feet in front of this tree and then all the other trees are pretty far back Again, we will do it in portrait mode. And what I really like about this is that the bush stays in, in, in focus. Uh, it does, it's pretty good all around. Maybe just a little bit of, of bleed there on this uh, branch that's kind of sticking up. But overall, I'm really, really happy. And then the other thing that I'm really impressed with is that this tree, because it's only a few feet back, is less focused than the bush but is not as out of focus as everything in the in farther back. So the cool thing about it is the 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 program or the app and the the logic behind it is definitely kind of looking at things at multiple depth levels and in kind of blurring them appropriately. So I'm pretty proud of that. Now here's a lamp post again, a standard app and it, we're looking at portrait mode um, works out pretty well. Again, a little bit of bleed 
on the edges, particularly right in there and right in there, that kind of that kind of uh, kill the illusion, but overall it works. And here is a mailbox, standard app. You can even see this little stop sign in the back. Now, if we look at it uh, with the portrait mode, again, I'm pretty impressed. The edges are pretty sharp, you know, the borders, uh, everything is pretty sharp, but you can see, obviously, very clearly that stop sign gets blurred uh, pretty appropriately in the back there. And then the, the last picture I have, I have a tree. I have this little thing hanging from it. I have this, this tree branch that kind of shoots off into the into the back so it's it starts a couple feet back and then continues to go back five feet or so and then the, these trees way in the back and if we look at it on portrait mode um, again I like how everything up front including the little pig is in focus the tree branch is out of focus um, but only a fraction of the amount of the things in the in the way way back so the good thing is this picture looks pretty good uh, with that depth of field. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with it. I understand it's a beta. Even if this were the rolled out product right now, I'd still be impressed. I'd, I'd definitely use it. Just keep in mind, you've, it's it's shooting on 2X. And again, uh, you know, if you have details in it, um, you may want to, you may need to kind of clean things up a little bit in, in post-production, or you may uh, just, you know, not want to use it at all if, if that's the case. But overall, I'm pretty impressed with the kind of this, manufactured depth of field effect that uh, Apple released in 10.1. Peter Von Panda, out!